Buen dia, and all the way from Paraguay, I say good afternoon to you on this lovely Saturday. Salute, by the way. So, what a week it's been. I tell you, I have never had a week like this. We've shot past 700 subscribers, like, dramatically. Uh, bookings has doubled in the last three weeks. Um, what else? Uh, we have a lot of agents going to work with us, different languages, different things. And thanks and a great shout out to the beautiful uh, Lydia and the wonderful Alberto and the resourceful Gilberto and Hedy and, you know, just everybody that's getting, uh, you know, coming on board. I mean, it's just phenomenal, the support, the, um, you know, everything. So great stuff. So we've had a lot of changes on Casa Astral, Immigration Services. Everything runs through now Camino Verde, Paraguay. The simple reason for this is it's just too bloody hard to have so many websites to manage and all of the same stuff and all of these kind of things. So everything runs through um, Camino Verde, Paraguay. Our booking service, everything still remain the same. Our guest houses, our stay accommodations, we're adding a few little extra tidbits to the, um, to the menu. We're also doing a lot of new things to make our lives a little easier, especially mine. <laughs> because in the past, for me, you know, I had to go into Camino Verde and then Casa Astral and I have to reply to everybody and I just said, you know what, let's just get one central point. I don't have time. Um, to, to jump between emails and, you know, this and that and, you know, just get one central point. You know, work smarter, not harder. That's how it goes. So, um, Lydia and Alberto, you know, has been phenomenal support over the last couple of um, weeks. I have to say a big gratitude, muy gratitud. I can't say the fucking word now. <laughs> but anyway, Lydia, thank you very much for your lovely energy, your beautiful uh, cooperation. I mean, what you've done in three weeks, I struggled to do in eight months. So, <laughs> shows you with the right people, you could actually do a shitload more. You know, and dedication and focus and all those kind of things. It's all about, you know, client care it's about providing people phenomenal services and the focus of our immigration service now is is that we are bringing you together with Paraguayans we are connecting you with the right kind of people we are also setting you up with networks that could be conducive or suitable to your needs so we're working on a lot of things to make life fucking amazing. Sorry for the swearing, but you know, that's how I roll. So a lot of people have asked me about, you know, to show a little bit about Casa, well, Camino Verde, the demo house that we've built and what it is like where we are and all these kind of things. So I'm gonna take you on a little journey, but before I start walking, I'm gonna have a little sip first and then I'm gonna take you through the house. Now keep in mind you trolls and you evil doers, you poisoners, buggers out there the house is not finished okay um, we have to still install the safety tank the water purification system for recycling our dishwater our uh, um, uh, shower water our personal water um, for the washing the dishes all of us that gets put through a recycling unit so all of this is still coming on we're splashing on some paint we're fishing finishing up the the lights in the kitchen um, shelves are going up as soon as I have welding wire I I have a you know a, 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 one of these ones that don't need welding sticks <laughs> well <laughs> anyway so I'm waiting for the roll of welding wire to arrive so that I can continue the kitchen cupboards and do the rest of the things now as I've mentioned before this house is constructed with refurbished recycled and natural elements as well as conventional materials just to show that we can make a mix of things and still have an awesome house that's well insulated um, extremely structurally sound uh, and unique because that's what we want. We want something unique, don't we? Because I'm not one of those people that want to follow every Tom, Dick and Larry. I'm one of those people that want to be uniquely different. Hence me driving a 1978 Volkswagen Beetle. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm like no other man you've ever met. <laughs> so we're going to do things differently. So, Itakarubi de la Cordillera, let's try that again, is really a quiet little town. Now my home is right next to a stream. Um, it is a very private kind of suburb where I am in, in Itakarubi. Majority of people here is either retired generals, colonels, uh, extremely prominent business people and extremely wealthy farm owners. <laughs> I'm mixed with the right crowd. <laughs> location, location, location. So let's go for a little walk and I'll take you guys and just explain a few things. Now, do keep in mind that nothing is finished. We are still working on it. And obviously, my little Avery over here. Thank you very much. God bless transportaciones. Now, obviously, I was very sad when the Quasi died because I still fucking miss a motorbike. I miss riding around on a motorbike. This is just Paraguay. You need a motorbike to survive. So, as you guys can see, my house extends from the back there all the way to the front of the border of the wall of the property. So, right here, we have a canal where there's a constant flow of stream water going. And it goes all the way to beyond this house or resort. There is a huge stream. So everything goes there. Everything is in the stream. Even in the summertime when I'm fucking hot and I'm irritated, you know, I would go to the stream and I'll have a beer there or I'll have a smoke and, you know, just sit in the water and it's constantly cool. Even in summertime, people will park for how far to get here to the streams. Now there's lots of access points because in Paraguay you cannot obstruct any rivers or streams or anything. That's the law. No matter if it's on your property, you have to make 20 meters uh, room for public to come to. So this is basically where I am at. Behind me is the main road and also the stream going from this house here. Now all the way up that side is the towards that side is the the hill paraguay doesn't have mountains it's got hills now just to show you my house is kind of ugly looking from here because we still have to put corrugated roof sheets all around the back of the kitchen up there is fabio and his resort as well and it is a lovely lovely now i do apologize we've got a new fridge so the box is there a lot of rubbish so keep in mind the house is not complete we are still busy with behind me is my friend my dear friend and his wife betty uh, and blas ds retired colonel blas and professor uh, betty ds or vetti in paraguay in spaniel b is a v for a woman so vetti uh, retired professor and blas retired colonel now it just goes here because you know there is wild animals like cows <laughs> i'm just joking so we're going to take a little walk into the house and i hope you guys enjoy now again things that i've put on now i'm not finished yet by my windows all the windows around the house even my bedrooms all of it bathrooms all of it is covered with insect nets i have a insect front gate as well so obviously i don't want mosquitoes and i don't want spiders do you get me i don't want bugs i don't want snakes i don't want anything like that in my house and i don't want scorpions and those things are quite prominent in paraguay not snakes though but you know that you do get but not here you get um, scorpions and spiders big like i have huge hands so <laughs> i've seen tarantulas that size so again what we're going to do is i'm going to show you we have recycled bottles we have conventional white ash brick as well on the walls i'm using a pvc pipe to push my water down now obviously i haven't connected it to a water tank yet because i'm struggling to get my water tanks delivered to paraguay now so recycled uh, wine bottles for lights which is very important because we want things to look a little bit more dapper and dancing now as you can see we have a lot of oranges and we've got a lot of lemons and we've got naranjas and all of these kind of things so i do apologize for the i'll mess here because i'm still working on recycling pallet woods for furniture <laughs> so 
One of my favorite features in this house is this window. You'll see from inside it's all recycled Amstel bottles because I wanted the brown and I couldn't get brown. Now, that mold thing that we are fixing, it is definitely not conducive. Uh, you know, when you're in a rush and you do things alone, it's kind of fucking hard to cover all the angles. But we're going to fix that. That's the bedroom uh, and the back area of the house. And obviously, it is just lovely. And my friends are extending their home, making more room for more people. So, come with me and I will take you on a little tour of our house. Now, as we can see... I'm going to go in here because we have a cat in the house as well. She's not house bound yet. This is our kitchen and dining room area, people. We've decided to go away from plastering, but rather focus on corrugated roof sheets, as well as we have insulation at the back and all the wiring and all of it. It just makes things easier. For me, the heart of the home is the kitchen and dining room. That's where people sit and eat, that's where people sit and communicate, that's where people just connect to a higher sense of community living. However, as we go closer, I'll show you guys. We are still busy. Now, obviously, we've just cooked, so it's been a busy day. So we have our tops, our fridge, our lovely gas cooker. Everything is corrugated roof sheets and our little shelves. Now, obviously, we're going to put over here uh, shelves up as well for the plates the glasses and the normal stuff now i know some of you have been dying to see the tree in my kitchen so <laughs> the kitchen area i wanted to have open flow air because first of all paraguay is extremely hot you need constant flow of air now sometimes there's times that you don't get enough air however this little design of mine actually brings in cooler air hot air and cools it down and moves it through the house so when you stand by the wash basin that is the indoor kitchen and what we're going to do is now obviously clean it up a bit we're going to have plants and flowers and everything herbs and spices everything growing inside here now it is going to be insulated as well so that we don't get insects and all of these kind of things in here we're going to put a hydroponic system here so that obviously if worst case scenario locust hits the world we are covered we are protected you know what i'm saying washing machine all of these kind of things off grid living pal look at that now now that's our windows from the other side because for me it is very important to have light natural light so follow me as we take a staircase down here to the dining room and now when you're in the dining room and you look in this is what you see this is the dining room going living room and hall to the bedrooms and bathroom now that chandelier of mine is a washing machine drum so <laughs> life gets better doesn't it so that is a washing machine drum and what a fucking pattern it gives to the walls i think it's one of the most amazing things ever now this wooden piece here that goes in L shape is going to be sleeper couches so we can accommodate another two people if they need to come and visit us or stay with us besides two bedrooms we will have actually have more space to cover people now that's all recycled bottles refurbished bottles and so forth mm. now just to show you guys the thickness of the walls 48 0.5 centimeters well insulated we have a mix over here of rammed earth walls as well as now i'm going to show you my boudoir now obviously i haven't cleaned the bloody place i haven't tidied it up it's still a mess it's a bold site so please keep in mind i'm not going to go into the bathroom because obviously i told people i was coming to do a video and now they decided to take a shower but in any way selfish bastards but in any way so the rooms are comfortable. I mean, literally, I have a king bed. Now, obviously, I have a tea towel there because I haven't got curtains yet. And I have a neighbor at the back that can see me naked. I'm trying to avoid those moments. That's the one that drives with a motorbike around trying to find me for a date. So anyway, we go away from that one. So anyway, improvisation, that's what it's all about. High ceilings. My ceilings is 3.5 meters high. 
Um, I improvised, I just hanged uh, a metal bar, chains to the, the beams, and that's my clothing rack for now. Now, again, made all of this furniture pieces, my little workstation and wardrobe and all of these kind of things. Now, the marks on the outside is from the plaster that's not completely done. We didn't do a, uh, I didn't do a good job. So I'll go back and I'll fix that so that damp marks will go away because it will be sealed in. Again, very thick walls, very insulated, very spacious rooms, to be honest. Now, obviously, light fittings and shades and all that will be finished. The curtains will go up. And then, obviously, I've always had a big fascination with these windows. Since, do you remember Magnum PI? Huh? No, I used to love those windows, those California and those kind of... Uh, retro kind of swivel windows more air more everything it's just awesome now again i have insect nets on all my windows um even with my makeshift little curtain there now obviously chickens i haven't got doors yet i'm still going to work on that i'm waiting for the welding wire to come so and anyway so that's basically a quick little run around and just to show you from this side how that looks now obviously we're still gonna paint and we're putting up wooden uh, you know lentils and beams and just to make the thing look a little bit better however from your room that is basically bathroom over there there's another bedroom around the corner now obviously I'm not gonna go in there because that's two teenagers in there and I don't want to discuss you so that is basically your view from the bedrooms that is what I call a healthy living space. This constant flow of air, it's well insulated. It has, for the roof for instance, we have very thick uh, boards. Above the boards, we have um, insulation, a roll, which is these silver ones over here. So they do help a lot by diverting the energy and all of those kind of things away from the house and for you that is important because in the summertime bad insulated houses retain the heat now even with this beautiful house of my friend betty and blast and that they are still working on um, their house is phenomenal it's a stunning house it's a really a uh, unique design however it's not well insulated in the summertime, you will be in bed lying 12 o'clock and the walls will be about 35 degrees. So again, when you buy property in Paraguay, be aware of how you buy and where you buy and all these kind of things. Now let me just try to put a little light on the subject because, you know, I'm sitting outside and we just want a little bit of love and a little bit of something out there. Let me just see if I put it on or did I put it off. No, that plug is gone. So let me see what is this. Uh, I have to find a plug to plug it in, but anyway, we'll do it later. So, <laughs> I still have to connect the DB board, but I'm still doing wires and I'm doing some changes on some switches and <clears throat> day-night switches and all these kind of things because I'm trying to make things automated. Even with the hydroponic um, tower farms, everything is automated. Things that we will grow is our herbs, our spices, the most important things outside in the kitchen, obviously. Um, you know, like your lettuce, your peppers, your... Um, what else is there? Shit, there's a lot of stuff you can grow <laughs> with hydroponics in the kitchen. But anyway, so we're going to do all of those kind of things. So, chickens. It was an honor for me to show you to you what I have done so far. And obviously I'm not going to show you the septic tank, the makeshift temporary one, because it's kind of like an overflow because somebody forgot to empty it yesterday. So, um, yeah, kind of a nasty day today. Um, but <laughs> we'll get there. Life is beautiful. And today we wish Susie Mendoza all the best for her future. She's pursuing a career in marketing because that is where her passions lie. Uh, you know, and uh, we wish her all the best for the future. You know, she has done phenomenal work with me and we are continuing our standards of work. Um, unfortunately, you know, certain people in life, you know, move away you know certain things in life just gonna take us different paths you know it doesn't make a difference 
where your journey takes you you know it's about being caring you know respecting people and respecting their wishes and for Susi, you know, immigration and relocation and residency and Camino Verde has never been a big passion. You know, her passion has always been marketing and advertising. Well, marketing, not advertisement. You know, she, she does coffee shops and stuff like that and some tea brands and that's it. So for us, we wish her well. And um, we really wish all her dreams come true. As for the rest of the team, my word, you guys are in for a treat. We have amazing people that's joined our group. If you visit the website uh, CaminoVerdeParaguay.com and you go to Immigration Services, even if you go to Casa Astral, it will divert you to Camino Verde Paraguay. Um, the website and what we do, what we're going to offer. We're working on a few extra things we're adding on. You get to meet three of the heads of Camino Verde Paraguay. And then from there, we basically just take it one day at a time. Now, again, we had a lot of bookings this week. As you guys have seen, um, the YouTube channel kind of exploded a bit this week. So that's all good. Um, and it's very important. You know, growth is important, you know. Um, things to remember, make sure your documentation is, is in order. Now, the country that you are residing in for the past three years, that is the police clearance that you require. Hmm? Now, for some of my friends that's living illegally without visas in different countries all over the world, we've all done things like that when we travel through Europe, um, my word of advice is get documentation, anything that stipulates that you've been in a country for three years. Um, even if you have to go to country of origin, where you were born, where you're from, that could work as well. Now, chickens, let's just get one thing straight here. For countries and people that come from countries that require a visa, our company has had phenomenal success with helping people succeed and getting a visa. We've never had one client being declined. Our clients basically that require a visa to enter Paraguay you need a registered company now it says you can have a normal person but do you think a normal person has got to have any guts by telling the government to give you a visa no no unless you're a person of phenomenal standing and all those kind of things then yeah you can do it however for us to offer immigration motivation letters for you to get a visa or for you to enter Paraguay without a visa, we need to motivate it. And because of our project and because of all our dealings with immigration, our standing with the immigration and, you know, and uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Internal Affairs, uh, e-commerce, our legal team and all these kind of things, our letters definitely will get you your visa. Uh, it is a very simple process. Now, obviously, if you require a visa letter, motivation letter, it is extra. I am not negotiable on prices, people, because <laughs> I've had some fucking doctors reach out and negotiate with me to knock down 500, and they didn't want to book because I wouldn't budge. And unfortunately, prices have increased in immigration. Now, I haven't uploaded the new prices to the new site and to all our updates and all of these kind of things because our profit is just much lower. However, we are still accommodating people as much as we can. So don't try to negotiate if you're two or three people. We have people that's eight or 10 or 12 groups at a time. So if you think I'm gonna give you a discount for one or two or three people, good luck. Um, respect the value of what we do. You know, we really go beyond and we really exceed, exceed all expectations. Besides, taking care of your documents before you leave we verify we check everything to make sure that you have peace of mind there's no drama there's no issues there's no hiccups or holdups so our team will go through your passports your documents your police clearance anything that's certified translated to make sure that you are in good hands before you arrive, you also address all the issues you might have. And even if you have uh, questions or requests, we can do it. Tours we do. Uh, now we have a, a wonderful group uh, that we do tour groups as well. So we basically need you for a couple hours on the first day to do your application for your immigration. 
then you have time open until we do your residencia, your, your um, police clearance, your Paraguayan police clearance, your Interpol, all those kind of things. And that will take a few hours as well. But the rest of the five days, you have time to explore. So we're going to offer tours. We have different guest houses all over Paraguay. Uh, countryside, we have a few farm guest houses now. We have in Asocion um, two, three guest houses. Uh, and then, obviously, as soon as this house is finished, this will also be available as a self catering unit. That brings me back to the next thing. We are going to have self catering units available for those who do want to cook for themselves. Now, we've taken the dinners away, but we still have the breakfast. Because a lot of people, I've realized over time, they prefer to go and eat out. They want to experience Paraguay. They don't want to sit at the same guest house, at the same place, and whatever. So we give you the room for that. No, we didn't drop our price, though. <laughs> quality is quality, pal. Um, so we're going to take care of all those lovely things and make sure that you, your family, and everybody is well taken care of. If you have requests to see properties, you have a specific budget, you have a specific target in mind, I would recommend reach out to us as well so that our team can plan ahead. If your goal is to come and do farming, let us consult with you and you tell us the size of land that you want. We will obviously take you to places that we know is good and the land is good and all of these kind of things and we'll try to get you the better deal. Not the foreigner deal, but the Paraguayan price deals. So again, dealing with us is very important. Dealing with us is going to be very successful for you. We have a 100% success rate, as I've mentioned before. We understand the needs and, uh, and wants of people wanting to immigrate because we've all been there. So, chickens, love, light, and all those kind of things. And I wish you well for the future. I wish you well for all that you are about to embark on. And for you that's reaching out to me after there's a video for immigration, relocation, all those kind of things, please, by all means, do so. There's no stupid questions in this world, only good questions. And we are happy to help wherever we can. Um, so, love, light, and all those happy things. Salute from all the way Paraguay. Peter van der Merwe is my name. And if you need anything else, visit our website, CaminoVerdeParaguay.com. Now, again, we're not associated with Paradiso uh, Verde. You know what I'm saying? Stick to that, people. We are individual. We are unique. And even our project is unique. And it confides, it combogulates, it confoculates, and it confuses people because it is so simple to get a sustainable future with growth and new opportunities. And you and a few others have a golden opportunity to join this community. Moving to a new country with support and the infrastructure that you need to succeed, we have your back. Love, light, and all those things. Take it easy. Bye.